Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Circuit Breaker. It's for two to four players, ages 10 and up, and it takes about a half an hour to play. In the game Circuit Breaker, you're basically going to get your own Circuit Breaker, and you'll be trying to build upon that with wires and appliances. Every player is going to get their own unique card that will display exactly how to play their turn, as well as what you're gonna need at the end of the game in order to score enough points. Throughout the game, you're going to have three actions. You'll be moving around your mouse, you'll be collecting tiles, you'll be playing down tiles onto your grid, and then you'll be discarding cards so that way you can gain cheese. And cheese is very vital because your opponents can place their mice on the, your own spaces. And when that happens, a player will be able to take your piece of the circuit. Now, everybody's going to get their own unique circuit here. And it's basically going to give you two slots where you can place down certain pieces, right? And if you place them down there, uh, there's going to be certain rules. Much like the game Galaxy Trucker, where you're going to be placing down tiles that correspond. Threes will go with threes, two with twos, one with ones. And then there's a U that connects with everything. Uh, you're going to also get a secret objective card or a circuit breaker card card here. It's going to tell you what you're going to need in the game in order to succeed. Espresso Machine, Pizza Oven, Disco Ball, and Bubble Maker is going to be the objectives for one singular player because these are going to be the appliances that gain them the most points. You need to gain as many of the same exact appliances as you can and you can still gain points from appliances that you are not necessarily needing uh, based on this card here. The end of the game is going to depend on the number of players. If it's a two player game you're simply going to rule out the right hand side of the card and for a three and four player uh, for, 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 for three and four player game you're going to rule out the right hand side of the card and for a two player game you just go ahead and go through all of these each one of these little boxes here represents a round and on these markers here represents other things as well which we will get into down below the idea of the game is at the end you have the most points scored based on your little back end card here and if you can do that you're going to be the winner of the game all right let's go ahead and take a look at it so here we have the game Circuit Breaker and everything that it includes, and let's go ahead and go through all of it. The first thing you'll notice is these Circuit Breakers. There's four of them, one for each player, and of course these separate playing cards or reference cards every player will get as well. You'll also notice these got these little mice here, and these are going to be the tokens you'll be utilizing to place on certain tiles and then obtain them at the beginning of your turn. These cards over here are your objective cards. No one will know what your objectives are because they'll be face down like this, but you will know what yours are, and they give you four different objectives for each of these different cards so every game will be you'll be trying to gather different types of appliances this is the round tracker like I showed you before in a three and four player game you simply use these three and then in a two player game you simply go through the entire track once all the rounds go through that's the end of the game over here all your cheese and of course this is the area where you'll be purchasing or picking up certain appliances and or wires here there's going to be three of the appliances and two wires and then this little space here is just specifically for cheese uh, these are the specific decks of cards the appliance deck and the wire deck here and whenever you're going to go ahead and pick up one of these guys here you can go ahead and replace it so that's going to be with the big decks of cards here and then of course you'll be getting the box and a rule book so that is mainly what you're going to be in the game all right let's talk about how a turn works and what you're going to get in the setup so when beginning a game of circuit breaker you're simply going to choose one of these random circuit breaker cards these are the secret objectives that will give you the four different types of appliances you're going to need throughout the game your player reference card which will tell you the three actions you can take on your turn in any order and of course the back of here is going to illustrate the end of game scoring on the card uh basically this is what this means here is based on appliances right here one two three and four if you have three bubblegum machines and is on your card you gain 10 points if you have three bubblegum bubblegum machines and it is not on your card at the end of the game you score six points and it goes from one to four probably because there's only four total uh then you're also going to get three of your little appliances here and three of your wire cards these ones on the back or the back here is going to show you whether it is a three-sided or a four-sided wire but it won't show you how many with a connection are going to be and then of course the appliances are all random but you could get anywhere from a puppet show to a jukebox to a karaoke machine then after you've got everything you need including your little mouse here you're going to begin the rounds and simply go ahead and take your little token and place it on the first round of the game uh, then you're going to start off by collecting anything your mouse is on well the beginning of the game you don't collect anything because your mouse isn't on anything but you can choose in any order these three actions you can put your mouse on any appliance space regardless of who has it or where it is in the game and uh, then you can be done with that you could also choose to put it on one of these circuits or the wires here and then you could uh, be done as well because at the beginning of your turn you can basically pick those cards up the other option is you can place two tiles down from your hand regardless of what they are onto your side of the field provided you follow the uh, applicable placement rules the last thing you can choose to do is simply to discard a card from your hand and take a piece of cheese this is basically what you're going to use to uh 
to squeak your way to victory by removing your opponent's pieces from certain areas on either your board or anybody else's board and putting them onto one of the top of the decks based on where the uh, little mouse has been played, which I'll explain in a little bit down below. And that's all you're going to do. So you do all those three actions. You're going to then pass your turn. It'll go around in a circle. Once that round is done, you move to the next portion of the game. And uh, finally, last thing to note is after the fourth round, there's a fifth one here uh, for a two-player game. And this one card here means you get to, everybody gets to draw an extra one of these cards. Everybody gets to draw an extra one of these cards. Then two more rounds. And then, of course, the last one over here to explain is the appliance card. Uh, token or symbol and that will illustrate you'd be drawing those cards so you're getting additional cards throughout the game normally you only get one card a turn though and it could be wild if it's on the top of the deck but anyway that's the objective of the game at the end of the game you're going to tally up all your points based on the appliances you have and calculate your score and whoever has the most is the winner all right let's go down below and i'll show you a couple turns of the game and then i think you'll get it we'll tell about i'll tell you what i think about it so here we are in Circuit Breaker. I'm going to show you a two-player game, just so you get an idea of the different actions. You're going to be getting one of these Circuit Breaker cards, which I showed you. They're going to be face down. No one will know except for you what your words are here or what your appliances are. And then, of course, you'll be getting these. And on the back, it'll tell you your scoring for the end of the game. Um, if I'm going to remove this, we already have a black one right here. Anyway, so now we're going to begin. I've given everybody three of these appliance cards, two of these circuit breaker cards, your circuit breaker itself, and it has two different sides. You can place your uh, tiles on either side that you would like, and of course your mouse token, which starts off the board, but once it does that, once it goes uh, onto something, it will never go off the board again. You're simply going to be placing it uh, repeatedly onto one of the appliances or one of the circuits. So let's go ahead and begin. Uh, we'll start with this player here first because he was the most recent person to eat a piece of cheese we'll say and we're gonna go ahead and look at what we've got so we've got a karaoke machine we've got a jukebox and then we've got a puppet show and he needs to have an espresso machine or a pizza oven a disco ball or a bubble maker so he didn't get a very good hand none of these cards are actually going to help him in, in scoring bonus points at the end of the game however he can still score points with these so he can still utilize them if he'd like to so the first thing I think he was he's going to do is he is going to uh, move his mouse so we'll move his mouse. He can move to any of these three spaces here or any of these two spaces here. If he needs more of these for connections, uh, then he can take these. If he needs more, uh, these things for his specific uh, specific applications, he can do that as well. So a puppet show he doesn't need, a television he doesn't need either, and then there's a jukebox there. None of these things are relevant to him, so maybe he'll just go for this. It's got four sides on it, so that's pretty useful. After he's done that, that's his move mouse action. He can go ahead and place two tiles, or he can go ahead and discard for a cheese. I think he's just going to go ahead and, uh, let's go ahead and discard this jukebox. When he does that, he can put on any of the applicable spaces, any of these three, just place it just like that, and then he's going to gain a piece of cheese. He can put it right there if he wants. And now the last thing is placing two tiles. Remember that the rules follow that so you have to actually place them on appropriate slots. So for instance, right here is just fine. A three can attach to a U. A U is basically universal. Um, and then you have the twos, and of course you'll have ones as well, which I don't have any to show you here. But I think you'll understand once you see it. Here, so that's one tile, and we'll go ahead and put the second one down. That's another U, and it's a karaoke machine, which is going to net him at least one point at the end of the game, as long as that is with him at the end of the game. It'll tell you. It's not on his card, so he's going to have a number of same type appliances. That's one, so he'll have three points. But if he can get another one, that'll give him six, uh, oh, sorry, one point. And if he gets another one, he'll get three points. So it's okay. It's not as good as having the right ones on the cards here. After he's done doing those actions, he's done, and the next player will get to take their turn, and they can go ahead and place, uh, maybe he wants what does he got a disco ball a boom box a television and a pizza oven well he wants the television so that's pretty useful there he's got some cards in his hand he's got a bubble maker which isn't really useful he's got a disco ball which he does need and then he's got a karaoke machine which he doesn't need so the disco ball is pretty useful and he's got his two circuits here so he's going to go ahead and place one of these guys let's go ahead and do something like this so it gives um there's a one a two and a three here so it kind of gives more uh, value and then we'll take this universal one we'll place it over here that's two right there and uh, he's still if he wants to he can go ahead and discard a card and get a piece of cheese but I don't think he wants to do that he'd probably just rather hold on to his cards because you only get one a turn really uh, so he's going to end his turn uh, on the next uh, turn that's going to happen is the beginning of the round. Uh, you're going to move this guy to the next position, and the next player will begin by simply taking off his mouse and collecting the card that was underneath it. Whenever there's a card uh, that's been taken and there's no space, there's nothing there in that space, you're going to put a new one down. Remember that when you discard cards, uh, when you remove one of the cards, this one here will stay 
provided there is a card, but if there's not, that's when you would go ahead and replace it from the deck there. He's got this now, and he could choose to hold on to it for a moment and play something else. Maybe he wants to go ahead and play another circuit. He'll play something over here, and then if he wanted to play maybe the puppet show, he can go ahead and place that like that. Then he could go ahead and choose to place the mouse down, uh, and let's go ahead and show you how this works. So he can place it on here. He can never place it on his opponent's uh, wires, but he can place them on his opponent's appliances here, right? Uh, so that is going to be that. He can choose to use this piece of cheese if he doesn't want that, his opponent to get the television. How that works, he's just going to go ahead and discard this back to the pool. This is going to go on top of the deck here. And his opponent will take a rare card at random as opposed to getting that television, which is actually what he needs. So you get the idea for that. Then, of course, uh, the, he'd be done with his turn. The next player is going to get to go. He'll go ahead and take his uh, mouse back. He'll go ahead and collect one of his cards here. He's got a bubble maker there. That's not really useful for him. And then, of course, he sees this, which is scary. So he might want to discard this bubble maker, put it on top of something, which will then give him a piece of cheese, which will then make him discard this piece of cheese and once again put this guy on top of the deck there, pushing him away from getting stealing his disco ball appliance, because he wants that. That's actually really useful for him. And then he can go ahead and place his mouse down. Maybe he wants to go for the jukebox this time, or yeah, and then uh, he's going to go ahead and play some two more appliances. So he'll do this one, and he'll do this two, two more tiles, I should say. And then a pass, and it'll be the next player's turn. It'll continue like that until the end of the game. In a two-player game, it goes one, two, three, four, like I said before, and then it goes to here. Uh, whenever it, the round starts and it shows a symbol there, that means they're going to take the top card of that deck and give one to every single player. Uh, and the same will go for all three of these symbols, and then all three of these are going to be for the appliances. You would give one of these to each and every player. And then at the end of the game, uh, after all the rounds have been completed, you're simply going to flip over your circuit breaker card for every player. You're going to take all your appliances, and then you're going to add them up based on the score down here. Whoever has the most points in total at the end of the game is going to be the winner of circuit breaker, having the best circuit, and that's how you play the game. All right, let's come up and talk about it. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. Now, the first thing that comes to mind when you see the game is, of course, artwork and the stylization. This basically is going to have the circuit breaker, a bunch of wires and appliances. I think it's just fine for what it is. It kind of reminds me of, like, the Take the Cheese kind of game because it has a mouse, and then you basically have this, like, puzzly thing going on with it. I don't think uh, in any means people are going to be like, this is astounding as far as artwork goes, but it's not bad either. In the game, you're going to be drawing the car drawing cards as the mouse is being placed down, and you're going to be moving and putting the different tiles down onto the board and you'll feel the synergy start to happen and it's really unique and interesting I like the fact that you're trying to gain the certain types of tiles and it's always different with the circuit breaker card as far as what types of appliances you're gonna go for there are problems with the game the first thing I can think of is when you're playing a two-player game specifically you're going to be placing down to get the specific appliance at the beginning of the game and it's gonna start flowing pretty well but if you start to realize when you place down a mouse on your opponent's side of the board onto their, one of their appliances especially if you need it and they need it then they're going to be having to discard a card every turn to take your piece away from you so you uh, to, to take that piece and keep it basically get rid of that mouse and so that way I can't steal the piece right but then they could do the exact same thing to me so it starts making the pool of cards less useful because you don't want your opponent to steal the appliances that you need that you've gained throughout the game and it, it kind of feels super samey at that point like I think the problem uh, is just specifically the fact that when you are you're, you're, you're almost kind of enticed to steal from your opponents constantly there is of course in the larger player game only a certain amount of pieces of cheese and if you want you can start hoarding those pieces so that players cannot continually do that back and forth but in a two-player game it's it's kind of like it feels like you kind of want to do that every single time I'll steal from you no I'll steal from you I'll discard I'll discard and it's just like but I want to use the pool but I kind of don't because if I do that then he can still steal from me and I'll have to discard a card and now he won't so he'll be a, he'll be a card up on me every single turn and I think there's just some small some small change in the rules as to how the stealing will work and to where I will enjoy that that aspect of the game a little more because overall the game's cool I like how it feels I like building the circuits I like Galaxy Trucker and because this game reminds me of like a more family oriented version of Galaxy Trucker it's got this kid friendly vibe to it I would enjoy this game provided that that was fixed. Um, of course, all the different jukeboxes and all that are kind of fun to get, and you start to realize the strategy in the game comes to knowing where your opponents are going, why they're attacking those, spe those specific pieces, and whatnot. In a two-player game, it's kind of straightforward as to how that works, but in a three- and four-player game, it starts getting more intriguing, more interesting as to where people are going, how they're taking certain pieces. I like that aspect. It has a little bit of take that, too. In fact, 
a, a thing I noticed with a three-player game is people can team up on one specific person, putting all their mice on the, uh, that person's appliances, and you can only, of course, discard so many cards to get so many pieces of cheese throughout the game, to where you can use as many pieces of cheese that you have, but you only have so many cards, and really it might not be worth it. You might have to just let people take your stuff. And that kind of burns when you've got like four decent appliances and people all jump on you and take your stuff away and you can only stop certain amounts, right? So it just has something to do with that stealing aspect that I just don't like in this game. I do like the fact, like I said, is the set collection, the tableau building aspect of the game, and then trying to determine where your opponents are trying to go and how they're trying to pick up certain appliances and how they're going to better you by placing where they need to place. And there's of course an interesting aspect too, where you're gonna have these circuits and you need to try and build them correctly and you're too worried about what your opponents are doing or where you need to go next that you're not necessarily thinking that oh I don't have I, ha I want this appliance because I need it because it's on my card however I don't have the circuit to connect it to and so because of that now I'm suffering and I've also got somebody trying to steal from me so it gets pretty nuts right which is fun I enjoy that aspect of the game but overall it I think it needs some fixing uh maybe they'll change it up in the in the Kickstarter or maybe I didn't understand the rules correctly but as far as I, I gathered it you could just steal back and forth from each other and it kind of seemed like there's no reason why you wouldn't do that due to the fact that you would basically be losing a card um, otherwise. But no, no, nevertheless, if you're interested in taking a look at the game Circuit Breaker, go ahead and do so in the description below. It's currently on Kickstarter. All right, guys, that's all I got for you this time from Circuit Breaker. Cue the outro. All right, guys, thanks for watching another Unfiltered Gamer Kickstarter board game review. If you like this video, guys, really like videos, you do like this, it really does help. We do greatly appreciate it. As well as do check out Circuit Breaker, we're going to be on Kickstarter. I think another thing, too, is because maybe we're just so competitive in my group, we have to steal constantly, and that's how we figure these things out. But I think also for kids, it won't be so bad because for people who are not super, like, aggressive, they won't mind that aspect of the game. But anyway, go ahead and check it out, as well as taking a look at our website, unfilteredgamer.com. We have tons of blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. All right, guys, that's all I got for you. And as always, I look forward to building a circuit with you next time.